ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير واليه المصير ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغمه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين يقول الله تعالى اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من النار ثم أما بعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify him We seek his help and his assistance and his aid And we seek his forgiveness for our shortcomings And we send our peace and, peace and blessings On his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And his companions and his family And all those who follow him until the day of judgment from uh, the integral parts of our Iman, completion of our Iman uh, is loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one does not have complete faith unless you have true, genuine love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah azza wa jal says in the Quran, an nabiyu awla bil mu'minin min anfusihim. That the messenger, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has more right to you, he's more worthy uh, of the believers than they are to themselves. Rasulullah has more right to, for, for, from us than we have from our own selves. Uh, and in the hadith, Rasulullah says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب, أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين That none of you believes, meaning none of you have complete faith. Complete faith until you or until I am more beloved to him than his child and his parent and all of mankind. So one cannot be a complete believer until Rasulullah is more beloved to you than everyone else in this life. You cannot be a true and complete believer. Your, your Iman is lacking. If somebody else besides Rasulullah is more beloved than him. And that includes your family, your parents, your children, your spouse. Nobody else can share in that highest love that, that you have with Rasulullah Not even your closest family members. And in the, another hadith, Rasulullah says, ثَلَاثَةٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ uh, Whoever has these three qualities, whoever possesses these three qualities, they will taste the sweetness of faith. And it's only if you have these three qualities that you will taste the sweetness of faith, the sweetness of Iman. If you don't have these three qualities, then you will not be able to taste the sweetness of Iman. And these three qualities are man kana, man kana Allahu wa Rasuluhu ahabu ilayhi mimma siwahuma. For a person, uh, for Allah and His Messenger to be more beloved to a person than anything else. For you to love Rasulullah, love Allah and His Messenger more than you love. Anything else? 
uh, And for a person to love another individual only for Allah's sake You love somebody else, you love your brother only for Allah's sake Or you love your sister only for Allah's sake وَمَنْ يَكْرَهُ أَنْ يَعُودَ إِلَى الْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ أَنْ أَنْقَذَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ كَمَا يَكْرَهُ أَنْ يُلْقَى فِي النَّارُ And for a person to detest, to hate, going back into disbelief after Allah has saved him from disbelief as he would hate to be thrown into the fire. These are three qualities. If you don't have these three qualities, then you will not taste the sweetness of faith. So as we can see, Love of Rasulullah is an integral part of our Iman. But what about the other way around? A person might ask, we love Rasulullah more than anything else. But what about the other way around? Does Rasulullah love us the way we are commanded to love him? Does Rasulullah love us the way we are commanded to love him? And this is a natural question that will come up when you love somebody. When you love somebody and you care about somebody, you would like to know that they feel the same way about you. If you love somebody and you care for somebody, you would like to know that they share the same feelings, that it is mutual, and that it is not, they don't have the opposite feeling that you have for them. And this is natural in human beings. And so this is a question that a person might have. We are commanded to love Rasulullah but does he have that same love for us? And of course, the answer is resoundingly yes. That Rasulullah loves us, the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, in the same way or more that, than what we have been commanded to love of him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is an answer. We know the answer to this, but we might not know the extent of how much Rasulullah loves his Ummah. We might not know the extent, or we might not be able to prove that Rasulullah loves this Ummah the way that we are commanded to love him. And so this is what we want to, inshallah, touch on today. The, some examples of the love and care and concern that Rasulullah has for his ummah. And when we learn how much care, concern, and love that Rasulullah had for his ummah, this will increase us in our love for him. If we look at uh, how Allah Azza wa Jal describes Rasulullah in relation to the Ummah, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Lakhad jaakum wa sulum min anfusikum, azizun alayhi ma anittum, harisun alaykum bil mu'minin raouf al rahim." Allah Azza wa Jalla describes Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says that there has certainly come to you a messenger from amongst yourselves, and he is concerned. He is very concerned that you should have any type of suffering. He is very concerned that you should have any type of hardship and difficulty. This, concern, this concerns him. This concerns him. And he is, uh, he it grieves him that you should have any type of difficulty. You should have any type of, uh, of difficulty in the religion. And, and Allah Azza describes him, Hadisun alaykum, and he is concerned for you, anxious concerning your well-being. And he is for the believers. Allah describes him with two qualities. He is ra'uf, he is kind. He is gentle, kind, and rahim, merciful to the believers. This is how Allah Azza wa Jal describes Rasulullah to his ummah. That it pains him, it grieves him that we should have any difficulties. He is concerned for us, for our well-being, anxious about our well-being. And for the believers, he is gentle and kind and merciful. From the examples of the care and concern and love of Rasulullah to his ummah, is that he would weep and he would cry for his ummah. It comes in the hadith that Rasulullah was reciting some verses of the Quran, quoting Ibrahim salam, where Ibrahim salam says, uh, where Ibrahim salam says, Oh my Lord, they have led astray, talking about idols. They have led astray many amongst mankind. Whoever follows me, then he is of me. And then Rasulullah recited the verse quoting Isa where he says, 
وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ That if you punish them, then you, they are your slaves. If you choose to punish them, O oh Allah, then you have that right because they are your slaves. And if you forgive them, then you are indeed the Almighty and the All-Wise. You are the Almighty and the All-Wise. And then the hadith continues where Rasulullah SAW raised his hand and he said, Oh Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. And he began to weep and he began to cry. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel. He sent Jibreel to Rasulullah SAW. And he said, he, he told Jibreel, go to Muhammad SAW and ask him, what makes you weep? Why are you crying? What makes you cry? And so Jibreel goes to Rasulullah SAW. And of course Allah is more aware than anybody else. This is not knowledge that Allah is unaware of. But Allah wants to show us something. So Jibreel goes to Rasulullah SAW and he asks them, Why are you weeping? O oh, Rasulullah, why are you weeping? And so Rasulullah SAW, he responded and he said that uh, I'm weeping because of my ummah. Because of my ummah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells Jibreel alayhi salam. So Jibreel conveys what he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and then response of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and then Allah commands Jibreel go back and tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, say to him that verily we will please you with regard to your ummah. We will please you with regard to your ummah. And we will never displease you. We will please you with regard to your ummah and we will never displease you. From the examples of the love and care and concern that Rasulullah SAW had for his ummah is that he would make dua for his ummah after every single salah. He would make dua for his ummah after every single salah. Aisha radiallahu anha, she saw Rasulullah SAW in a good mood one day. And so she asked him to make dua for her. She asked him to make dua for her. And so he made a dua for her. He said, Allahumma gfir li Aisha ma taqaddama min dhanbiha wa ma ta'akhar. Oh Allah, forgive Aisha for what has proceeded from her sins and what will come after. And what she has concealed from her sins and what she has made open. And Aisha became very happy at this dua. This is a beautiful dua in which Rasulullah SAW is asking for her forgiveness. If Rasulullah asks for her forgiveness, then this is definite answering from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so she became happy until her head fell into her lap. And then Rasulullah said to her, فَقَالَ لَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَيَسُرُّكِ هَذَا Are you happy? Are you pleased with this dua that I've just made? فَقَالَتْ وَمَا بِي لَا يَسُرُّنِي دُعَاءُكُ So she said, of course, why would, not, why would I not be pleased with this beautiful dua that you have just made for me? And then Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said after that, وَاللَّهِ إِنَّهَا لَدَعْوَتِي لِأُمَّتِي فِي كُلِّ صَلَاةِ That I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is my dua that I make for my ummah with every salah. With every salah, this is the dua that I make for my ummah. And we see a number of examples of Rasulullah's care and concern for his ummah in wanting to reduce the, wanting to reduce the burden that is placed on our shoulders from commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prohibitions. So we see that uh, during Ramadan, Rasulullah came out and he prayed what became later known as the Salat al Taraweeh. He prayed one night in the masjid and he prayed by himself and he did not call the people to pray. And a few people joined him. And then the next night, he prayed again in the masjid. A few, people, a few more people joined him. And then the next night this happened again, a few more people joined him. And on the fourth night, he did not come out. The fourth night, he did not come out. And by then, a large crowd had gathered around. People wanted to pray Qiyam with Rasulullah in Ramadan. And he did not come out until the morning. And when he came out, he told the people that, I knew that you were waiting. It's not that I was unaware that you were waiting for me. I knew that you were waiting. But I was afraid that if we continue on, if I continue praying and leading you in this Ramadan prayer, that it will become obligatory on you. 
and you would not be able to do it. So because of fear that this would be going to become difficult on his ummah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left praying the qiyam in the masjid because he did not want it to become obligatory on his ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us and increase us in love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to always allow us to give uh, the rights that he deserves, us to give the rights that, that is deserved to him. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Amma ba'd. Continuing on, some more examples of the care and concern that Rasulullah had for his ummah and his fear of difficulty on the ummah. We know that we are commanded to pray five times a day. We're commanded to pray five times a day. This number of five, as we know, was not originally five, it was originally 50 times. And this is when Rasulullah went up to the night journey and he was personally given the command to pray. And this command was given with an original number of 50 times, 50 times a day. And Rasulullah accepted this number. And as he was coming down, he met Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam told him, you need to go back because your ummah, I have experience with Bani Israel. And I know that from experience that your ummah will not be able to handle 50 times praying a day. And so Rasulullah went back up. And he asked Allah for it to be reduced. And then it was reduced by 10, 40. And he came back down and Musa alayhi salam met him again and told him the same thing. And he went up again and it kept on getting, getting reduced to 30, to 20, all, all the way until it was reduced down to five. Why is it that Rasulullah sallam kept going back up? Even though this was not an easy matter to go back up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah to reduce something, a command that he was already given. Why did he go back up? Because of his love for his ummah, his care and concern for his ummah. That's the only reason why he went back up. Or else he would have been happy to come back and take the command of Rasulullah or the, take the command of Allah and convey it to the people. Also, from the examples of Rasulullah's care and concern for his ummah, is that he would not like his companions to ask too many questions. And this is not because he hated questions. But he was afraid that certain types of questions would lead to more obligations. Certain types of questions would lead to more obligations, which would make things difficult for the people. And so he would discourage them to ask questions. He would discourage them to ask questions. It's mentioned in the hadith that Rasulullah said to the people one day, he delivered a khutbah and he said to the people talking about hajj. Ya ayyuha nas, kutiba alaykum al hajj. Fahujju. Oh Allah, oh, oh, oh people, Allah has commanded you to make the hajj. Allah has commanded you to make the hajj. So perform the hajj. So a man stood up and he asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi a question. He said, Afi kulli amin, ya Rasulullah. Do we have to make this hajj every single year? Oh Rasulullah. And Rasulullah did not answer him. And then the man asked again, O oh, Messenger of Allah, do we have to make hajj every single year? And Rasulullah Sallallahu did not answer him. And then he asked a third time, do we have to make hajj every single year? Rasulullah did not answer him. And then eventually Rasulullah told him, he said to him, لَوْ قُلْتُ نَعْمْ لَوَجَبَتْ If I had said yes, then it would have become obligatory on you. And وَلَمَسْتَطَعْتُمْ And you would not have been able to do it. So Rasulullah did not want this question. This is why he did not answer the man's question. Because in his statement, make hajj. It does not give the indication that you have to do it every single year. So this man is asking a question which was not present in the statement. The, the statement of Rasulullah was clear. Make hajj meaning, make one hajj. And once you have done that, you have fulfilled your obligation. But this man is asking something and if Rasulullah was to give the answer and say yes, then it would have become obligatory. And we would have to make the hajj every single year. And we know that even once a lifetime is difficult for many people. Imagine have to, having to make hajj every single year. So Rasulullah told him, لَوْ قُلْتُ نَعَمْ لَوَجَبَتْ 
If I had said yes, then it would have become obligatory. And you would not have been able to bear that. You would not have been able to do that. And then Rasulullah said to the addressing the people, Leave what I have leave what I have commanded you. Don't ask questions like this. Because the people before you, they were destroyed because of their many questions. This is a, a bad habit of Bani Israel that they would ask a lot of questions. And they would ask questions, and the answer would come and make things difficult on them. And the more questions, the more questions they asked, the more difficult things became, became on them. And Rasulullah did not want his ummah to experience what Bani Israel experienced. Many things were forbidden for them. Allah Azza says that because of the transgressions of Bani Israel, a lot of things, a lot of the good things of this life were made haram on Bani Israel. They were not allowed to do a number of things. A lot of things were forbidden on them because of their transgressions. So Rasulullah did not want his ummah to experience what Bani Israel experienced from being prevented from many of the delights of this world. And so he told the companions, he said to leave, what, leave, leave these kind of questions away and be careful about excessive questioning. Because those before you who asked many questions, they were destroyed. And because of their differing with their prophets. Excessive questioning and differing with their prophets and not obeying their prophets. So when I command you to do something, then do it to the best of your ability. And when I tell you not to do something, I prohibit you from something, then leave it. And avoid the excessive question. Of course, this was during the time of Rasulullah when the revelation was coming down. And this is why he did not want these questions to come because then Allah can make certain things obligatory and it would cause difficulty. And Allah says this in the Quran. Ya amnu, la tas'alu an in, in tubdalakum tasu'kum. Oh believers, do not ask about things that if you were to give, be given the answer to these things, then this would cause you difficulty. Especially when Hina Yunazal al Quran, when the Quran is being revealed, because this is a period of legislation. So Allah prohibited this type of questioning, and Rasulullah also prohibited this type of questioning. After he has passed away, of course, then questions are open. And nobody should use hadith like this to say that we can't ask about a religion. We need to know. We have things that we need to learn about religion that we need to ask. Fas'alu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'alamun. Allah says, ask the people of dhikr, the people of knowledge, if you do not know. So after Rasulullah has passed away, then we, make, we need to make sure that we are asking the questions that are needed so that we can know what are our obligations and what are we to stay away from. A person might look at uh, these examples that we've given and they might say that this love that Rasulullah had is really restricted to his companions, those who saw him, those who lived with him, those who traveled with him, those who had that honor of meeting and accompanying him. But what about those who came after, right? Those who came after us, those who we had not had that ability or that uh, opportunity or that blessing to be in the company of Rasulullah to see the beautiful face of Rasulullah is the love and care and concern that Rasulullah had for his companions the same as those who came after them which is referring to us all those who came after in the later generations and the answer is yes it comes in the hadith that Rasulullah says in the hadith that I would have, I, I, I love, I would love to meet my brothers. I would love to meet my brothers. So the companions, they said, Are we not your brothers? So the companions said, Are we not your brothers? We are with you. So who are you referring to if, we're, if we're, we are not your brothers? And then he said to them, he responded, Rasulullah said to them, antum ashabi. You are my companions. You are my companions. But my brothers, they are those who believe in me, even though they have not seen me. And then in another hadith, Rasulullah 
Nasun yakununa ba'di from the most beloved of people to me are those who they come after me. They come after me. Yawadu ahaduhum an yirani that one of them would have loved to see me bi ahli wa malihi. They would have, that one of them would love to see me have wit, have witness uh, the meeting with me even if it was to cost him his family and his wealth. This is the one where Sallallahu says, I would have loved the most beloved to me, those who come after me. And they've never seen me, but they would sacrifice their wealth and they would sacrifice their family just to see me. We ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to increase us in love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to grant us his intercession on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. We ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to enter us into Jannah and to give us the companionship of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم in Jannah مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أنصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم أنصر إخواننا المستضعفين في فلسطين وفي غزة وفي جميع أنحاء العالم اللهم أنصرهم على أعدائهم اللهم فرج عنهم اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغدى عباد الله يرحمني ويرحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قيم الصلاة